had to just describe a Reader's Digest version, short version of what happens when we die. And, and for instance, like if we can communicate with people ongoing, like, are they always there present for us? And can no. you just kind of ex can you explain that the, the Reader's Digest answer to the last question is no. Mm -hmm. They're not always there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's emotional need that brings them in. And sometimes they have the emotional need, so it'll bring them in the other from their end. But there are atmospheric conditions uh, that inhibit uh, communication. There's some people who have uh, things are too resolved. There's no real need for it. Uh -huh. um, it depends on where they are. There's some people who die and have no interest whatsoever in contact with this world mm -hmm. or this particular dimension. So the answer to that one is no. The harder answer, the Reader's Digest version of what happens after life, is everything. <laughs> and um, I can't answer for the last 100,000 years of Homo sapiens sapiens experience with the afterlife. When I talk about the afterlife, I talk about a modern Western version, the sorts of things uh, uh, that, that I've seen occur, that I've read about occur, the research has uncovered. And one thing you have to have to understand is that the afterlife is not a place. It's called fashionably now a non-local reality, mm -hmm. but it's made like our lives are made out of consciousness. And so that people bring uh, elements from their lives that they've known that comfort them or, or stimulated them or places, of, places, people, events, they reconstruct in the afterlife. Mm. Animals do this too. Mm. So that a domestic animal, a dog, say, will bring it probably his food bowl, right? A wild dog would never think of something like that. So it depends, your afterlife, as you immediately experience it, depends a great deal on individual expectations, more than expectations, individual needs, and, um, and your, your general cultural background. Mm -hmm. Having said that, there are a few things you can say about uh, what happens generally to modern Western people when they pass over. And one of them is, is, a, is a kind of a play period, a rest period, where if, if they're adjusted and they pass over well, they go to things, that many of them may go to a seascape, for instance, or lavish gardens, or they'll reconstruct a house from their childhood that they loved. Mm -hmm. And in those periods, um, there's often a meeting of, of family relatives, very often animals. Mm -hmm. And um, until there's a kind of settling down period where they start to really scrutinize their lives or do research, uh, incredible things that are, are, that are done in the afterlife. And sometimes it's therapeutic, such as in painting. What I haven't seen, and which is, seems to be a peculiarly modern Northern California version, is this idea of the afterlife as a kind of group therapy. I mean, I have seen it to some degree, but not in the sense of it being passive that your teacher tells you when it's time for you to move on. Mm -hmm. So there's that, and then there's people who don't do that well uh, for reasons of generally of denial, not being prepared, um, and they have difficulty and sometimes need help from us. Some people die with a tremendous sense of guilt and may reconstruct a kind of hellish situation. Mm -hmm. Suicides, uh, for the most part, if they're active suicides, not suicide by uh, overdose, accidental, uh, can be, are probably some of the most brilliant after-death communicators I've ever met because they have tremendous emotional energy. And, uh, and it takes some time to get their attention and to slow them down because they're really in a panic of what they've done. Oh, mm -hmm. Shock! Mm -hmm. you know, that they've done what they've done to themselves, usually. And so to get their attention takes a little time uh, to get them to move on. Wow, so fascinating. Yeah, it is. And you know, every time I work with it, I learn something new. It's unending. And cor while the, I talk about multitasking sometimes, um, the, that a, uh, a person in an energy body is in more place than once, mm -hmm. right? So you see these sort of vacation spots and whatnot. Uh, you see even uh, deeper in the sort of research they might be involved with or arts, very often the arts or even mathematical dimensions and things of that sort. But even at the same time, there's contact with their reincarnational selves, <laughs> sometimes a huge gathering of it. Um, there's sometimes service. And there's also these more transcendent aspects of the self that operate all at once. 
Wow. There's no time there. It's all simultaneous. Wow.